Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm actually outside here. It's a beautiful day in the middle of September and we're actually starting to get some action on our wine cap beds. I'll be doing a post on that probably in a little while, so stay tuned on that. Our Michigan oyster totems haven't produced any mushrooms lately. I did get some nice clusters of oysters this summer, but uh, lately they haven't done much. I'm just keeping them moist, keeping an eye on them. I'm still convinced I'm going to get a massive flush. Uh, this fall at some point. So being outside here taking a look at my outdoor grow projects gave me an idea for a video And this is a trick I've done several times over the years and it works out really well And it's a way you can make your own Wood plugs for mushroom cultivation and with this trick you can go from liquid culture basically a liquid culture syringe in one jar set up uh, one step basically you can get your own really nice colonized wood plugs to get an outdoor grow going. Now these wood plugs, they have several uses in terms of outdoor mushroom cultivation. They, uh, they can be used to do logs. That's typically how they're used. So to, in order to get an oyster or shiitake log going, you just drill holes, you pound these myceliated plugs into the log staggered every so often usually it's around like 50 plugs per log with about a three to four foot log and then you seal them with a little wax and you allow the log to incubate and in a little while you get some mushrooms you can also use them for doing like ground mushroom beds like wine caps or bluets uh, once you get these colonized uh, you can use them like pegs and just push them into the ground into your substrate and use them to get uh, your bed established that way so as a substrate themselves, wood dowels are not super prone to contamination. They're pretty easy to work with. So there's several different ways you can, you can get them colonized. The cool thing about this trick is, so say you have some liquid culture, you have a jar already or a syringe or something, and you just want to go right to plugs in one step. You don't want to do multiple jars. Uh, you know, you don't want to do spawn and then have to open jar lids and spawn the plugs and say also maybe you don't have a flow hood yet you don't have a still air box with this trick you can basically do this in open air with little to no risk of contamination and it's all in one step we're just going to pc this jar we're going to inject a little lc in and the magic's just going to happen so we have three layers here we have our plugs on the bottom then we have a little sawdust and we have some grain on top it's actually wheat grain but uh, I'm going to take you down in the mushroom dungeon and we're going to talk a little more about the layers and how I prepare everything and set these jars up. And uh, we'll go down there and we'll get them rolling. Alright guys, welcome back. We're down here in the mushroom dungeon. I have everything laid out here to make our one step mushroom plug jars. So everything's ready. I'm going to show you how I set these up. Now the thing with going from LC straight to wood based substrate is wood based substrate by itself is not very nutrient rich so the mycelium tissue in the liquid culture is usually really slow to take off so you could take some liquid culture and inject it right onto some of these wood dowels and uh, eventually it would start to colonize these but it would be really slow and your mycelium would be pretty weak, you know, anemic initially, just because there's not a lot of nutrients. So the idea with these jars I'm going to show you how to set up is we actually have a small layer of grain, small layer of sawdust, and then our plugs. And I'm going to show you why we do three layers and explain everything. But our layer of grain is going to be on top. That's our wheat grain over there. And that's going to be the nutrient rich substrate that gives our jars a jump start. And once the grain and the thin sawdust layer underneath it are colonized, we're going to give the jar a shake. It's going to distribute all that good grain and mycelium and everything throughout the jar all over the plugs. And these things are just going to jump right off and these plugs will be ready in no time. So I prepared my wheat grain like usual over here. Uh, if you want to see how I do that, uh, just watch my grain spawn 101 video i'll link that in the description uh, basically i just uh, did a hot water soak overnight and laid them out on a towel let them air dry a little bit so my wheat grain's all ready to go i'm actually doing some other jars that's why i have so much of it the dowels 
what I did is I got a pot of boiling water going, dropped the dolls in, brought it back to a boil, let them boil for a couple minutes. Then I turned the water off, put the lid on, and just let them sit overnight. And that does a pretty good job hydrating these dolls. So these are all ready to go too. And for our sawdust, I'm just using some hardwood fuel pellets. I just did one cup of dry hardwood fuel pellets and one cup of hot water and let it mix up. And so now we have some perfectly moisturized field capacity sawdust here. And then we have two quart jars. So usually a quart jar will hold around 150 plugs. And we have some lids. These are just our cheap PP5 lids that we drilled a couple holes in and we have an injection port and a breathable filter disc. These are both from Micropose. I also did videos on this uh, lid setup. This is the lid setup I'm currently using. Uh, they do make little silicone sealing rings you can put on the inside of these lids and that'll help give you a better seal if you're having problems with contamination during incubation. I have some of those as well. Sometimes I use the seals, sometimes I don't. A lot of times I can get away without using the seals, but I'm also incubating all my jars in uh, storage totes. So let's get started. Let's build a jar here. So I don't want to fill the jar up too much. I'm just going to go right about to there. And uh, we're going to put our sawdust, thin layer of sawdust, and then a thin layer of grain. That's probably, I would say, because I didn't go all the way up, that's probably 125 plugs or so. Okay, so I did about three tablespoons of moistened sawdust there, and that's just gonna give us a layer to hold our grain up above our plugs, because we want the LC colonizing the grain first, and then moving down into everything else. So this thin layer of sawdust is gonna keep the grain up on top, keep it from falling down into our wood dolls. And if we get a lot of uh, LC in the jar, it's also going to keep the LC from falling down through the plugs and pooling at the bottom of the jar because you never want pooling liquid in any of your mushroom jars or bags. So the sawdust does a couple things here. It actually, it'll hold the LC from falling down through your plugs and it's also going to hold our grain layer up here at the top. So let's go ahead and get our grain on here. All right, so there we go. That's the whole jar fully constructed. You don't wanna fill it up too much because you wanna have some room to shake this jar and redistribute everything. So I filled it right up just below that top line on the quart jar. And then all you have to do is put one of our lids on it and that's it. That jar is ready to go. I'm gonna make a second one then these are gonna get some uh, foil lids on top and we'll get them into the PC. On to the next day, guys. So, open up the PC, everything's totally cooled down, let it cool down overnight. So, here's our plug jars. Got the flow hood running and a couple of LC syringes. I figure I would try a couple different strains uh, for this example. And we're gonna do one ground-based mushroom. We're gonna do some wine caps and the uh, syringe right there with less LC in it. That is our Italian oyster syringe. That is from the liquid culture jar that we started in our grain spawn to LC video. And uh, I'm still getting comments saying, on that video saying, man, there's no way that works. Grain spawn isn't sterile enough to pull that off. Uh, I'm telling you guys, I've been growing off that jar and I've done that trick dozens of times. It works great. The whole sterility thing is kind of deceiving in general. Um, you know, at the temperatures and pressures we work at, when we say we sterilize things, they're not completely devoid of life. Uh, we're going for sterile enough. Uh, sterile enough is the gray area where we operate as home mushroom cultivators. So the moral of the story is 
you get a good clean bag or jar of grain spawn, it is sterile enough. We have our Italian oyster syringe, our wine cap syringe, and we have two jars. Now I'm just going to be hitting that little layer of grain on top with our LC, and it does not take a lot of LC. I'm talking a couple few cc's. So you could, uh, you know, say do like five jars like this with one 10 cc syringe. And actually when you get a 10 cc syringe from most culture suppliers, there's actually more like 12 cc's in there. So we're gonna move these jars in front of the flow hood here. We got the flow hood running. We're gonna hit them up with our LC. And then as always, they're gonna go into our storage tote here for incubation. We already have a bunch of jars going in there. All right, here we go. So. You can see after the PC run, it looks pretty much the same as it did before we ran it in the PC, just a little more toasty. Everything's been nice and sterilized at 15 PSI for 90 minutes. So at this point, we're going to remove the foil caps and they will stay off during colonization. Uh, they're basically just to protect the lid uh, during the PC run. So, but I always check, always check for tightness on your lids. Uh, when you pull them out of the PC because uh, sometimes they will loosen up a little bit. So that's it guys, uh, I put a little extra juice on them there, I probably put about 5 cc's because I'm trying to burn up these syringes. I'm in the process of making some new LC jars right now, but uh, they're going to go into the incubation tub and we shall be back once we have some mycelium. It's been about a week and a half since I shot these jars up with the LC and uh, you can see our Italian oyster culture is totally crushing it over here. It's gone all the way through the grain, down through the sawdust. It's actually starting to colonize the plugs on its own. Uh, with a strain species this aggressive, uh, you could just let this jar go. You wouldn't even have to shake it. It would eventually just uh, crawl right down and colonize those plugs. But uh, we're going to go ahead and shake it. And our wine cap jar here is doing what wine caps do. Uh, they typically germinate really quickly and then kind of stall out. And actually a shake stimulates them it, it the growth will just jump right off again like uh, really aggressively after you do a shake so even though our grain isn't fully colonized here we do have some nice mycelium it's starting down into the sawdust so we're gonna go ahead and shake this one as well I am set up in front of the flow hood here uh, again you do not need a flow hood for this uh, but if you have one by all means use it uh, you could just simply do this in a clean room, you know, just clean everything down with uh, isopropyl and uh, give them a shake and they should be fine. So I'm going to shake these up and then I'm guessing it's going to take another probably week or two and we should have fully colonized jars.
there we go. We got our jar all mixed up. This is our Italian oyster. And again, once the grain is fully colonized, the uh, sawdust and plugs that are in this jar aren't very prone to contamination. So uh, this thing's gonna rip, and I'm guessing within a week, uh, this one's gonna be fully colonized. Our wine caps over there, we might have to shake them one more time. Let's see, we got some nice distribution there and the core of that grain was fully colonized. It was like a solid cake when I was shaking it. So I may have to shake this one more time, but uh, it might be good to go. We will check back in a week or so. All right, we are back. This is gonna be the culmination of our LC to wood plugs video. It's been about a week since we shook our jars and the Italian oyster jar is more than ready. Uh, they just took off, went crazy after we shook that jar up. So they are definitely ready to use. And the wine caps, as I mentioned before, they were stimulated by that shake and uh, they're taken off as well. Uh, they may need maybe one more shake and they should be ready in a week or so. So, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of different ways to uh, get your wood plugs inoculated, but this is a cool trick if you wanna skip the middleman and just go from LC right to plugs uh, you can do these in bigger jars obviously too you could do like some half gallon jars or the big pickle jars that i show in my other videos and uh, obviously do a lot more plugs that way if you wanted to uh, you know if you had a big run of oyster shiitake logs going um, that would be a good way to get some more plugs if you still wanted to use jars but uh, there's some other uses for these too, if you, especially if you do smaller jars. You know, if you're hiking around the woods doing some foraging, you can uh, throw one of these in your backpack and do some uh, gorilla <laughs> mushroom inoculations in the woods. You know, if you're walking, you see a uh, like a nice poplar, cottonwood, sugar maple stump that, you know, maybe a tree that fell recently or something. Uh, you can just keep a cordless drill with you and have a jar of plugs. And you can go ahead and uh, inoculate some logs right in the woods and, uh, you know, maybe get some mushrooms next year. Same with the wine caps. You know, you find a pile of wood chips. A lot of uh, cities, I know my local town, you know, municipalities, they'll have an area where they keep wood chips and uh, pile them up. And, you know, you find a little pile of wood chips on the edge of a field or something, Throw some wine cap stuff in there, and uh, next spring you might have a little wine cap patch, and you'll be the only one that knows about it. So uh, hit me up in comments, guys. As always, uh, I like discussing stuff with you. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you next video.